In this video, I'll show you how to connect your Epson Perfection V39 II scanner to your Mac computer. This works with MacBook Air, Pro, and any other Mac computers. And then I'll show you how to use the scanner. So let's get started right away. Before starting this process, do not connect the printer using the USB cable to your Mac yet. First, we need to install the software on your computer. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get on the same page I'm showing you right now so you don't have to search for it. And under download, you're going to need to select your operating system. So here we have a drop down list and you just have to select the one that is appropriate for your computer. If you don't know which of these Mac OS you need, it's very easy. You need to go on the top left corner of your Mac and click on the Apple logo, then select the first option, which is about this Mac. And over here, you're going to have which Mac OS version you're currently on. So in my case, it's version 12.7. So I can close this. And now in this menu, I can select over here, Mac OS 12, maybe yours is, will be different and then press go. Over here, we're gonna have under recommended for you drivers and utility combo package installer. You just have to press the download button and save it on your Mac. Once it's downloaded, you can open it or just go in the folder where it's downloaded. Once you click on the file that you just download, you're gonna have this open up. You just have to double click on this icon with the Epson logo. Then you'll have this screen opening and you're gonna have to press the blue button that says open. You may have to type the password of your computer. Now we have to go through all these different steps. So you're gonna press accept. Here, you're not obligated to leave this check. I prefer to uncheck it since I don't know uh, the software. I don't want the software to collect data on my behalf so, and then press next. And now they will ask you connect the computer and the scanner with the USB cable. So now it's the time to take the USB cable out of the box, connect the micro USB and to the back of the scanner. You see the port is over here. So you just have to align it, connect it this way. And then the USB port connected to your computer. Now, many new MacBooks do not have a USB type A port like mine. This is a MacBook Air M2. So what you need to have is a USB type A to USB type C adapter. This one is made by Apple. It always been reliable, but there's other brands making these. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get uh, one from Amazon. So I just have to connect uh, the cable in this adapter and then the adapter over here on the side. Now automatically, as you see on the screen, it has detected that the scanner is now connected and it will give you the choice to download certain things. So these are required, so you cannot uncheck them, but where there's a blue check mark, you can select to not download. So let's say I don't want the manuals to be downloaded. I can uncheck it. Uh, software updater in case you don't want um, your scanner to update automatically you can uncheck this too and support utilities as well you can uncheck in my case I like to keep these two but the manuals I really don't need them so I can uncheck it then press install at this point you just have to wait so um, it downloads and install the different things you selected Okay, now that it's finished, you're gonna have this check mark and you're gonna press the next button. Again, you have to wait and now they will give the instruction to open the scanner cover. So let's do it. 
then they will ask you to place any document on the scan bed. So let me pick one over here. I'll place this one. So what you need to do is to place it facing down with the image obviously facing the scanner. And what you need to do now is to align it with this corner over here. You see? What does it mean is you need to bring the corner of your page and it needs to touch where the, arrows is the arrow is pointing here, like this. And the top part of your page, okay, so I'm reading it like this, that's the top part, it needs to be um, over here where the front of the scanner is. So let me do it. Okay, it's aligned. Now press the next button on the computer. It will ask you to close the scanner lid at this point and it will ask you to press a certain button and that button is this one over here. It's the last one right beside the blue light. So I'll press it once. Automatically over here you're gonna see that on the screen something will appear. Here we go, we already have a nice preview here of what the scanner just scanned. And you'll have the screen telling you that the software has been installed and everything is great. So press on finish and register. And now it will simply bring you uh, to their Epson page where you need to register your scanner. You're not obligated to do this and I won't do it. But if you want, it's, you're free to do it. So <laughs> go ahead and uh, do that registration. Okay, so once all the software has been installed, you're gonna open the Epson Scan Smart app. If you don't know how to find it on your Mac, simply go over here where the magnifying glass is. Let me close it and type it over here. Epson, Epson Scan Smart. You should select this one. And this is the main software you're gonna use to operate the scanner with your Mac computer. There's different options that you can change at first. You won't have to go through all these settings afterwards. This is just to set, this is just to finish the setup of your scanner. Press on the settings button on the top right corner. This window will open. And from here we have a few options that we can select. First is scan settings. It gives you three different options auto mode, document mode, or photo mode. I suggest, and I think most people do not want to change the settings every time they scan something. So the best thing is to simply leave it in auto mode. This way the scanner will decide itself if it's a picture or a document that you're trying to scan. I find that this works really well and I never had any troubles during the few days I have tested the scanner with multiple different documents. Then we have photo enhancements. There are three different options. In my case, I like to keep them off. Why? Because I don't want uh, the software to modify anything on my scan. I want the scan to be true to the document I'm scanning. What I mean by this is if I select auto color enhance, well, if your picture, if it, uh, the software feels that your picture is not very vibrant, well, it will just hype up the saturation and most of the time I don't want that. If a picture is faded, well, I would want to keep it this way. But you can switch every single settings of here. It's up to you to turn them on or off. You even have a red eye uh, remove. If you have old pictures where um, people have red eyes because of the flash, turn this off, uh, turn, this, turn this on and you won't have this problem. Then we have customized actions. And we have a series of different actions that will appear after you scan a document. So you will have save, attach to email, send to Google Drive, Dropbox, Evernote, and print. If you're not using uh, these settings, some of them, let's say you don't have an Evernote account, well, just uncheck it. I don't even have a Dropbox account, so I'll uncheck it. This way, once you're done scanning, there will be less option on the screen and it will be easier to navigate. Then you have file name settings. This is every time uh, you scan something, obviously that file needs to have a name. And this way you can decide what the default name is. So if you want 
you can uh, you can write a few letters here let's say you want i don't know a b c d to start your file you want your st your file to start with a b c d and by the way you have a small over here example on how it will look you can select the date in which order and counter do you want to not have 001 002 003 or do you want this it's up to you to, you to select those settings then you have save settings I won't go through these options I highly suggest you just leave them like this then you can press close by the way other settings is very unuseful this only this and and it's not important so press close and then now it's time to put a document on the scan bed I have this one over here it's a small brochure it has a small crease what you need to do is again place it facing down and align it with this corner over here so make sure that both corners are touching then close the lid and now it's time to press on the blue scan button here we go we have a nice preview of how it looks and now from here we can delete this if we're not happy with the result we can rotate in case the orientation is wrong we can crop it if you want to delete some details over here and we also have stitch images over here now it's grayed out why because you need multiple image to stitch them together this is useful in case you have an oversized document and let me show you how to do it so you can keep this over here you can have multiple documents by the way on the left side here even if they're not related so for example I want to scan this very large um, page I'll remove this and you can scan it bits by bits so I'll make three different scans one two three and the software will combine them into one the important thing to remember is it they need to have an overlap so if I'm scanning over here until the bottom of this bear well the second scan needs to start at least here so there's an overlapping portion between these two and again here if this stops on the top of this yellow part the second scan the third scan sorry needs at least to have a portion of the middle scan so the software is able to stitch them so let me start with the top I'm putting the document sideways because it's easier in this occasion closing the scan lid and then to add more scans simply press the blue scan button here with the plus symbol now I need to scan the middle part of this document so I'll go ahead and go in the middle here we can see by the way the preview it stopped here so I, I, I need to have at least this portion in this new scan let me check oh yeah that's pretty good okay great and now the bottom part the orientation is not important I can simply do this to scan the lower part of this document so once you have finished scanning your document in multiple scans and by the way this is uh, three different scans but it, you can have 10 20 that's not important what you need to do is to select them all okay you can do this by keep pressing the right side click and then drag over every um, scan that you want to select perfect and then go and stitch images and select advanced stitching and as you see here everything will be combined in one single document and once you're done press ok press yes because it, it will delete every single scan and combine them in one single one so I'll press yes and here we go this is how it looks we can even zoom in and see how well it did because I don't see any crease any separation between the scans so this way you can scan very large posters or stuff that definitely won't fit on any scanner <laughs> okay so once you're done press the next button and now we're going to save everything that was on the left side over there so both of the scans and you have uh, the choice to save it on your computer attach it to an email google drive or whatever you have selected on pr the previous settings or print it in my case i simply want to save it so i'll press save and now i can give it a new name if i'm not happy with this let's say 
scan of the day. So both scans, both this um, truck scan and the poster I just scanned, both will have scan of the day and the first one will be 001 and the other one 0002. Select the file type, these are great for JPEG, you can select PDF or the other ones. And where do you want this to go? Press save. And we're back on the first page. If this was helpful, please take a moment and give a like, comment down below. This is the best way to support my channel. Check the affiliate Amazon links in the description and I'll see you in the next tutorial.